Hi, this is Sharina with Sharina Shack Scraps, and I am here with my third mini album in the Noteworthy series. This album is called The Expanded CD Case. Uh, you can do this one. I'm so excited about this one because you can do it traditionally or you can do it digitally. And I'm going to show you, we're actually going to create this album using digital papers that I have created and printed out. Um, and that kit is available for purchase. It's called the Gingerbread Collection on my website, and the links will be down below. Um, but let me show you the idea of how this works. Okay, it's like a CD case. That's why it's called the expanded one. So in the first, I'll let me show you the traditional version. In the traditional version, this has been scrapbooked with traditional paper. Okay, and in this pocket here, there's a frame. So in here, you can slide a picture of whatever it is you're trying to showcase here in this album, whether it be Christmas or New Year's or new baby or wedding. This is a great way to do a bunch of pictures in very little space. Look how much space that takes. Pretty cool. Okay, so in this first part here, this is the frame page. I gotta stop moving that around. Okay, and you untie this, which I've already did because I fumble with it every time. And then you open it up, and this is the whole mini album. And in here, you put all those pictures, whether they're pictures of all the Christmas events, pictures of all the year events, pictures of the new baby or the wedding, whatever it is, all of Christmas, all of Halloween. You can put them all in that CD and either give this away as a gift or keep it for yourself. I love to do this to keep my albums um, neat. The other thing I like about this is if you're at my house and we're all looking at the same little tiny scrapbook and somebody wants to turn the page and somebody else isn't done yet and so-and-so poked me in the ribs and so-and-so's poking me in the eye and stop climbing on me. Okay, we don't have to mess with that. I stick the CD into the TV screen and I'm going to show you later in this video on the computer how that works. Um, stick it into your TV and everyone can see on your big screen TV all the pictures of all the year, all of the whatever it is you're showcasing. And I like to digitally scrapbook my pictures before I do that, and I'll show you that later. This pocket here is what I call the sneak peek pocket because it is it gives you a sneak peek of what you will find in your CD here. And then you can make as many as these inserts as you'd like. I always make five because I've got five kids. So, and they slide into this pocket in here. Now, this sneak peek pocket and the CD pocket folds together, which keeps all that neat and nice and safe. This wraps around and then you tie it off. So that's how it's done traditionally. Now let me just quickly show you a digital version. This is a couple years ago. This is Halloween. So, as you can see, any theme. This, there is no frame here because this is a digital paper that I have printed. It just looks like a frame. All right. Open it up, same idea. Here I've got my CD pocket with all of my Halloween memories from 2012. And then, of course, my tabs for my five kids. And here, in this particular one, I have just whatever it was they were for Christmas that year. Or, sorry, for Halloween that year. I've got Christmas and Halloween on the brain. And it slides into this pocket. So, see how easily that translates from traditional to digital and back again? Really kind of a fun thing. Okay. Let's get started and hurry and make this. You need two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. The first sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock, you're going to cut down the middle at six inches. I've done a bunch of this for us already. So cut it at six inches. We have two 12 by six inch pieces. Then we're going to score both of those at six inches, right here and right here. See how this bends? I know that tape makes it hard. So I have two pieces that are 12 by six inches, scored at six inches. Now, this let me flip this over. This piece is going to lay on top of this piece. But before we do that, we first need to cover this, this uh, left side with either your pattern paper or your digital thing. And it, it's going to be the CD pocket. See how this is hanging? I've already done that, so I can just pull it out. And you can use um, your circle cutter or maybe a circle punch. It doesn't matter. You can make it square. Whatever you want to do, just it makes a pull for that CD to come out. And I found that when you adhere this down first and then and then cut out the circle, the 
it ends up being the same. When you choose the other way, something's bound to be off. So whether you're doing it traditionally or digitally, make sure you put your paper down and then cut out your half circle, okay? Then we're going to attach it to this piece. And to make a pocket, of course, we need to put adhesive on the two sides and the bottom. And I have done that, so let's peel these off and stick it down. Oh, almost got it. And I would use a strong adhesive or um, a wet glue so that the stuff doesn't stick in there, but you want it to hold this down pretty good. All right, there we go. We have our little CD pocket done, ta-da. Okay, the next piece that we need is six inches by seven inches. And this is going to make our sneak peek pocket right here. Okay, six inches by seven inches. We're gonna score at a half inch and six and a half inches, or a half inch on either side. And that's going to make our hinge folds that will fold down right there. Now, if you're doing this traditionally, fold your flaps under, measure down from the left top side, measure down one inch and make a mark. Then measure down from the top right side, measure down two and a half inches and make a mark and then draw that line. Then you're gonna take your paper trimmer and cut it off, and that will be your pocket. If you're doing the um, digital version, I like to already have my image already cut out, and I center it on here like this. I like to leave a half uh, eighth inch gutter space around. And then, oh, and my ruler is missing. Oh, there it is. My kids like to take my stuff and not bring it back. And I give it about an eighth inch gutter space, and then I trace it. So I know that that line is gonna match up with my digital one, because something's bound to be off, right? So then I know that that's correct. And I can adhere this down. And just to be quick, I'm just gonna tack this down. And I'll, oh, there's no glue in it. Of course there's no glue. I'm just gonna, tack this down and I'll glue it down really well later. All right. I'll take my paper trimmer. You can cut it with a pair of scissors too. And I like to line up that line and cut it off. This is excess. Throw it away. Okay. That makes this pocket right here. Okay, another thing we're going to do is add a little strip of adhesive or wet glue to the bottom of this page. Okay, all right, we're going to tail, peel off all the tape here, the one on this, on the bottom, and then the two pieces on the hinge flaps. And then we're going to adhere this down. Now, I originally designed this pocket without the hinges, but I really like it better with the hinges because I can get bigger inserts and more space in there, which I need. Okay, now this piece is, you actually only need it to be about three inches tall. So this is actually kind of long. But this is the piece, whatever you decide to use, whether traditionally or scrapbook or, um, sorry, digitally, you can adhere that into that place and I'll do that a little bit later. So now that's pockets done. Now here's the biggest difference between the digital and the traditional version to this mini album is this this frame page here. If you are doing this traditionally then you need a six by six piece of cardstock. Okay, and you're going to cut the center out of the cardstock. It's a four inch square. There's one inch on all four sides. You can do that with your paper trimmer, or you can do it with an X-Acto knife and a ruler, okay? A metal edge ruler. Either way, you gotta cut out a four inch square from the center. There's an inch on all four sides. It makes the frame, and then you put adhesive on these three sides, the top, the bottom, sorry, not the top, the two sides and the bottom, Peel those off, and they will go right here, only we're not going to do that yet. 
you have to do something else first, okay? But that is how you do this traditionally. You need to make your own frame. If you do this digitally, like I have with this one, this is the frame. It looks like a frame, but my picture has been dropped in there already, and I will show you how to do that over on the computer in just a few minutes. Before we add either the traditional or the digital frame to our frame page, we first need to add the ribbon that will hold our album together. And the ribbon is approximately between 23 and 27 inches. It depends on how wide you want it to be also, okay? I think this is 3 8 inch, somewhere around there. And the easiest way to get the placement for this is to fold your ribbon in half. I've got my folded edge right here. My folded edge goes on this folded edge and you can put it in the center or you can put it up a little high or a little low, wherever you want. I tend to go up just a little bit higher. Let me put some adhesive down on this. Oh, that looks good to me. I'm going to stick it in that vicinity. Okay, so the folded edge of your ribbon, my goodness, there we go. Folded edge of your ribbon goes on the folded edge of your paper. Stick it down and then open it up. Now you can either attach your traditional frame and add your picture to it later, or as I'm going to do, add your digital frame and it just goes right over top of it, which is what I'm going to do. Peel all this tape off. I'll fold this up and show you. There we go. How easy was that? Easy squeezy. Okay, your album is complete. Now we just need to make the inserts that go inside. The inserts, they measure four and a half inches by five inches. Four and a half inches by five inches. And these ones I've already added the tab to. You can cut as many tabs as you want out, or in the traditional uh, one that I have here on the computer, um, you can use either one of these tab punches. The, the template's actually big enough for this one if you'd like, but I really love this one. It's my favorite. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like if you're doing it kind of... You don't need a very much of that paper. You just need a little bit of it so you can make some tabs out of it. And I've added the tabs to the pages and then you can embellish these or add pictures or do whatever it is you want to your thing. Here I'm just going to add this last picture. I'll just tack it down. Maybe. Oh my goodness. There we go. And that completes my five inserts that go in my insert pocket. Okay, right here. My album is now complete. Easy squeezy, huh? Okay, so we fold this up, We've got our CD inside, wrap it around, and tie it up. Sorry, you probably couldn't see that. How cute is that? Now, the other thing that I think is cool about this is that doesn't take very much space. So if you need a stack of CDs, you just Oh, which album did I want to look at? Let's see, year 2013, 2012, 2011. That's the one I wanted. You pull it out, look at it. Easy to store, doesn't take a lot of space, but it holds your whole album. Okay, I'm going to take you over to the computer now and show you how easy it is to do this digitally also. All right, we are back with the third mini album in my Noteworthy series. This is part two, and I'm taking you on a tour through the computer of all the things that are available for this. This is the mini album we're talking about. If you missed it in part one, here we have our frame page, and this one was done using digital paper, but it was made with cardstock. Inside here is what we call our CD page and our sneak peek pocket with all of our tab papers in here that slide right down into that pocket. And those are the, these give us a sneak peek of what is on this CD. Now on part one, I sh told you kind of what I like to do and I want to show you what I like to do with that. 
on the CD, I like to digitally scrapbook my papers. Now this, again, this is made using the gingerbread collection from SharinaShack.com and these are the pages. I like to scrapbook 12 by 12 pages and then I put them together so they look like a two spread layout and then we stick these in the TV where everyone can sit around on the couch and look at the scrapbook together. And we can turn the pages at will. These are not done as you can see. <laughs> Title goes here. These are a work in progress but this is part of the kit. If you like what you see here, I have created 17 templates, look even a snow page, right here, 17 templates that are available for purchase and I mixed and matched these 17 pages to get 40 pages, digital scrapbook pages in just this Christmas kit. Now let me show you in Photoshop what I have available for you. If you like this made out of the gingerbread kit, exactly, here it is. When you purchase the hybrid mini album that goes with it, this is what you will get. These are PNG files. Here's the sneak peek pocket and the paper that goes behind it. Here is the CD. Notice there is not a circle cut out here. My circle might be different than yours, so I've left this blank and you cut it how you will. There are two frame pages, one that's very plain. You can either put your picture in that frame page or this one here where there's a couple gingerbread people and a, and a little bow. And then these next five are possible inserts. You can pick your favorite three or use all five. And then of course these are the papers that we need for our tab punches. And here's the tabs. They fit this big tab punch. It's about two and a quarter by three rough inches. This is the one I used for the kit. But um, they will fit these things. And then what you'll do is you'll save these P PNG files as JPEG files and then pr print them at your favorite printing place. Also included in this uh, hybrid mini album is the directions on how to complete this mini album. Written directions and pictures to help show you what it is you want to do. Let me show you how easy it is to do this. Here I've chosen this frame. The one with the extra stuff. Love little stuff. And I have a picture here of my little family in our traditional pajamas. Now I'm going to drag this picture, click on it, and drag it over here onto this template. Oh no, I covered it up. No problem. Over here on the bottom right hand corner is your layers palette. Drag my picture layer below my frame and it drops it behind it. How easy was that? You can print it and go. Say your picture, however, is the wrong size. I want this picture to be just a little bit smaller. It's starting to cut my baby's head off. Con hit Control T and it makes a little box around that picture. Now to keep this picture proportional I need to hold the shift key so that people don't get short or fat the way I don't want them to. And drag from one of the four corners just to make it a little bit smaller. And then I either hit the tick here at the top or hit enter, either one. And then you can click on your picture and drag it to the spot you want it. Then you save it as a JPEG file and print it at your favorite printing location. And then cut them out and add them to your mini album. That's how easy it is to use these PNG files. Now, if you like this idea, but you don't want to use the gingerbread kit, or you want to use another kit that you have, I have another option for you. You can buy, purchase the templates that go with this. Here is the template for the sneak peek page, the template for the page that goes behind. The template for the CD page, this half circle will not be there. There is a part on the PNG file, sorry, PSD file, these are Photoshop files, that says delete this layer. If you delete that layer, it'll delete this and this word date. You can add whatever you want to it. And then of course the frame, and there's only one insert template. You can make as many inserts as you want. And then these are the tab papers. It's the sizing for the tab papers. Also included with these templates are the instructions on how to make this mini album, pictures, and words. And let me show you how easy that is. So I'm going to do this frame. I pick this frame template and over here in our layers palette, see here's my frame, I'm going to tick all the little eyes 
that get rid of all of these embellishments here on the bottom. Because so I'm not going to use those flowers. I'm going to do um, a winter theme um, using papers from my Winter Chills collection kit. There's these two papers. So I'm going to replace this green paper first. And I'm going to replace it with this woodsy looking paper. So I'm going to drag it over on top and it covers it up. Oh no, where did my hole go? No problem. On the right side here on your t uh, layers palette, right click on that layer and go up to create clipping mask. And it makes it just the way I want it to be. Next I want to replace this scallop. So I click on the scallop and it changes it for me. There it is. Now I can drag this paper on top of this one. Oh, it covered it up. Not a problem. We're going to do the same thing. Create the clipping mask. Back over on the layers, here on the highlighted layer. Right click and create clipping mask. We're just going to cut just the top part. That's all I needed anyway. And then of course I've gone ahead and added stitching and a mitten die uh, what is it called? Sticker with some staples, a pair of skis, and a cluster of flowers that I created earlier. And now I have a new frame that I can print out and make a different expanded CD case with. So the options here are completely endless. Uh, be sure to check out my website at www.sharinashack.com. The spelling is below. <laughs> um, also, make sure you check out my blog to see what I'm doing and what's coming up next at www.sharinashack.blogspot.com sorry sharinashackscraps.blogspot.com the other one is my photography blog so hope you enjoyed this hope this was helpful and can't wait to come back with next month we are featuring this winter chills kit again